Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchasu, introducing Dungeon of the Endless, a roguelike tower defense dungeon crawler thingy of magic, which is the most accurate description of this game that I could possibly think of, which makes this game kinda unique in my eyes and in fact in the eyes of many that have already played this. Obviously, the Amplitude Studios is the one that is responsible for making of this game and as you may be aware Amputed Studios is probably one of my favorite game developers of all times which uh, you know means that I'm really liking what they are doing I absolutely love their Endless Space game which I guess you can guess just by viewing my channel because I have made almost 200 videos on this game and now those guys are also working on two new games, the first one being Endless Legend, but it is not yet publicly playable in any shape, way or form. And there's also Dungeon of the Endless, which has been released on Steam via the Early Access system. It is currently in a playable alpha, which means that this game is far from finished, it barely has any content in it, and you should expect to see bugs and other problems while playing this game because it is far from being ready. Just putting this out there, if you see anything troubling during this video cast, everything can change. As in really everything. We are still very early in the game. That said, I have to give those guys credit because I am yet to see a single bug in this game. This is the most bugless alpha release I have ever seen in my whole life. How did you do this, guys? I mean, sure, I've seen some bug posts on the forum, some people have bugs, but I have never seen a bug in this game. In early alpha, this just boom blows my mind, it's incredible. But I guess I should explain what this game is. Well, I have played several hours of it already. Even though I have only started playing yesterday, yes, I played a lot of it. <laughs> I bought it on the release day, but since I was away, I couldn't play it until yesterday. And uh, yeah, I'll let you watch the cutscene. And I guess since there is no dialogue or anything of the sort during the cutscene, I might as well explain a little bit of, about this game. First of all, I have been in this game several times already. In fact, I believe I have only lost once during my second run. In the current state of the game, because it is very short, it is also very very easy. And by the way, this screen totally do too. <laughs> Evoke some good old memories. Uh, you know the video game that is considered by many to be the first RTS of all times. Anyway, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about what we see right now, right here. Now, for some reason, the screen is. I don't know, I didn't want to... Oh, there we go, now it moves like it's supposed to. Anyway, this is what you see once you start into the game. And... Yeah. First of all, let's talk about the graphic style, shall we? So... First of all, let's use the scary evil word. It's retro style! By which point, normally when I hear retro style, I want to vomit and just turn off the video that I'm watching. But fear not! As you can see right now, this may be retro style, but this is the best possible type of retro style I can think of. It is retro style, but you can clearly see that whoever was the art designer for this game really knew what they were doing. It's not the ugly retro style, a the bit thingy that looks just horribly dreadful. It evokes memories of those 16-bit games and whatnot, but at the same time it really does look nice. And to add to that, the graphical effects in this game, they are really modern. I mean, look at this flame right here. Don't tell me that it doesn't look awesome. This, those flame effects, they are incredible. And mixed with this retro style kind of thingy, it does show, give it a really nice looking game. I mean, previously I would say that uh, Sword of the Stars The Pit was the game that was doing the retro style thingy the best because it was really good at what it was doing. But Dungeon of the Endless is by far much, much better in doing the retro style well in this modern day and age. So, there is that, we talked a bit about the graphics, we can talk about the music, it's awesome, there we go. <laughs> I finished talking about the music, you are just going to hear it by yourself as you're watching this video cast, so there's no need to deliberate on that. Sound effects are really well done as well, and uh, let's talk about the UI, or actually let's talk about what this game is, mm, it is hard to talk about what this game is, because right now when I'm still in a single room, I cannot really show you too much, when I start going out into the dungeon you'll see more and understand more. 
until that happens, however, I'll start talking about the UI first. Besides, UI is kind of the important thing that you need to be aware of. So, let's start by viewing the options menu. Options themselves are incredibly limited, but again, it is early alpha. The one thing that is troubling me a little bit is the fact that the devs in the FAQ mentioned that they have no plans of uh, releasing more resolution options aside from the windowed mode, which is kind of annoying for me because I know that we, uh, wide screen monitors are very popular, they are the most popular monitors on the planet, but I don't have one like this, okay? And buying a new one costs a lot, I don't want to do that, if at all possible. Besides, my monitor is really nice, really big, I have nothing to say against it, except it's not wide screen. So, the problem is that this game, when played in any of those monitor settings, aside from the best full screen resolution, it does have the black bars, which I like, but those black bars, I can hover my mouse over them, and as such, they are also being recorded by fraps, which make, is going to make it very annoying for me to render the game afterwards. So please, just consider making it so that those black bars, they're not just cosmetically black bars, but they are actually not an area that I can click on, if you know what I mean. This would be awesome. That's the only complaint I have about this game, though. Seriously. Okay, that's that. That's the menu. Main menu. That's the inventory. We're gonna get to that in a second. Now, this game, just like Endless Space, does utilize the four standard resources, which an Unprinted Studio seems to really like, since they are going to use them in Endless Legend as well. I cannot blame them. Those resources are really cool and good, and they showcase the economy very well. And this game, Dungeon of the Endless, does have some economy options added to it. So, first of all, there is the industry, and it works like you might expect. There is uh, the amount of industry you have, and there is the amount of industry you are gaining per, let's call it, a 10. And each 10 is basically you opening a door. You get, we'll get to that. But with industry you can build stuff, for example, make things that make industry, or food, or maybe make turrets or whatnot. Because this is partially a tower defense game, but only a bit. Kind of, sort of, not really, but also yes. Yeah, I know, very confusing, we'll get to that. So there is the industry. Science is not implemented yet as is the tech tree. We're gonna get to it, but I guess at some point in the future right now, we don't know much about it. I mean, we know some things about it, but since it's not here in the game, I'm not going to talk about this just yet. We'll get to the science later. Food is very useful because it allows you to heal your heroes and to level them up. As you can see, when we go into a hero screen, which I'll talk about more soon, you can uh, you have the options to level them up or to heal them, which is very important. You can also use food to buy new heroes if you meet them in the dungeon, which is also very important. Usually you always want to have uh, at least 30 food stock parts so that you can recruit a new hero. This is the very good amount. And there is dust, which serves multiple purposes in the game. First of all, dust is the HP of your crystal. Crystal is the most important thing that you need to protect. If you lose your crystal, you lose the game. As simple as that. The amount of dust represents the HP of your crystal. Each time you progress through the level, it resets to a 20, but if it at any point goes into zero, you lose the game. Every time the enemy attacks the crystal, it loses about one dust. This is about one HP. Once it reaches zero, as I said, you lose. But this is not by far not everything, because just like in Endless Space, dust is not merely a currency. It is also used to do a variety of different things. So. With dust, you can trade with merchants that you can find in the dungeon, which is nice and very important. But also, with this said dust, what you can do, which is very important, is power up the rooms that you find. We'll talk about uh, this faction more in a second. What more I need to explain the UI are the hero screens. So now, first of all, every time you start a game, you start with two heroes. Those are my heroes. And I have to say, I'm really liking the hero selection that I got this time around. Now, this is an introduction video, so I'm not going to talk about strategy or anything along those lines. I'll mention it, but not talk too long about it. But I really got a nice hero selection. All those heroes are different. As you can see, they don't have any passive or active skills as of yet, because this is early alpha. However, they all are still slightly different. For example, this hero, she is very fast. She moves like crazy. She is probably my favorite hero, Sarah Numas just because of her speed. She uses a sword to fight, so she is a melee character, we, and those melee characters tend to have a nice amount of HP and defense, sometimes also a considerable amount of firepower, but they have to go get into a melee to fight the enemy. And more often than not, than not they also have fairly poor wit, although Sarah actually has a very nice amount of wit for a fighting character, I would say. 
You can equip those guys with equipment, that being a weapon, an ammo piece, and uh, something that you do choose, a device as it's called. And this is your inventory screen where you can see what you've got unequipped right now. Obviously you start the game with absolutely nothing whatsoever, so right now I don't have access to anything at all. Now my other hero, he is uh, not a melee hero, he is quite the opposite, he is basically Schwarzenegger. Let's, put, let's be honest, he's got a big gun and he can deal a very nice amount of damage uh, to the enemy. He's got a decent attack power, I mean a very powerful, um, big amount of attack power and a decent attack cooldown, but he's got like no wit whatsoever and he's fairly slow, uh, especially when you compare it to the 30 speed of this other hero. So yeah, all heroes have their biography and whatnot, and in the future they will also have their skills and passive skills. And because they have different weapons, they only have some weapons that you can equip to them, and some you just you simply are not able to. For example, I cannot give a sword to this guy, but I can give a sword to this girl. What else there is in the UI? Well, I already shown you briefly that there is this building UI that uh, is over here. Right now you start the game with only three schematics, one third schematic and two structure schematics. And you can also raise the things that you've got. And there is also the countdown. It shows you the level you are on and the amount of doors you have opened. It also shows you if there are any enemies uh, that are kindly roaming around the level. It blinks red once that is the case. And that's about it for the UI. So how about I actually show you a bit of the gameplay itself. Now, right now you cannot select all of your heroes at once, I would be very happy if the devs were kind enough to include this option, because sometimes you want to move all of your heroes into one room, for example when the enemies are about to overrun a precious choke point that you're trying to defend, you need all of your heroes to be there and defend it, or maybe the enemy switch to your crystal chamber, then you need all your heroes to save it. Right now you can only select one hero at a time, which can sometimes be a little bit annoying, but again, alpha is alpha, this might be changed. Anyway, let's open the door. Each time you open a door, as you can see, you gain two science and two food, and we just entered a new room. Every time, almost every time you reach a new room, something is inside of it. Sometimes nothing happens, but this is very rare. Usually, most of the time, something does indeed happen, and you discover enemies, most uh, more often than not, merchant, a new hero, maybe a type of blueprint, maybe an item, maybe more enemies, it really, really depends. Now, what is important is that those rooms are key for your survival, because while those heroes are good enough to take on pretty much anybody in the very first few rooms, sooner rather than later, those guys are going to get overrun even if you do remember to level them up. And you will die if you don't do something. So, what you can do is use the middle mouse button to power up room, which I just did. This room is now powered, as you can see, this is the final use of dust. This doesn't actually use your dust, it's just if you have a certain amount of dust, you can power a certain amount of room. Every 10 dust, you can power a different type of room. If you lose dust, just one of your rooms gets unpowered. As simple as that. But it is very important to actually keep your rooms powered. First of all, when your room is powered, you can uh, make use of it. For example, right now, what I'm going to do is create this thing which generates industry. As you can see, it's right there, it is constructed. And now this thing generates me industry so that I gain 8 industry per 10 instead, uh, instead of a mere 2. Very important. If I want to unpower this room, boom, I'm back to plus 2 industry per 10. So that's important. Same goes for turrets. See, I can install turrets on those small hub areas, but they do not work if there is no power. It's kind of uh, simple. And oh wow, I actually started. Well, the first schematic I got is one of the, my favorite schematics. This is incredible. This thing heals you heal in the room, which is very, very nice indeed. I'll talk a bit more about uh, the healing aspect a little bit later. So, the other thing that is important, you heroes, aside from being able to fight, they can also man the equipment in a room. And by which I mean, when a room has this big central hub uh, that you can make big uh, structures in, then those heroes can man this thing up. I mean, as you can see right now, I am gaining 8 in super 10. If I were to move this girl out of this room, I would be gaining less. I mean, as you can see right now, I'm gaining 6. Now I get 7 because this guy started manning this thing up. Basically, the more weight your heroes have, the more bonuses you get from manning a type of protection facility. Right now, you can only produce food and industry. I imagine that in the future there will be more stuff. There is also a land module that maybe we'll discover so that I can talk about this. But there are only three major modules that you can install. Now, what else do I need to say? Yes, there are buddies in this game, as I said. They can never walk through 
uh, block uh, uh, closed doors, so right now I don't have to worry about them. This game is kind of turn based, kind of real time based. I mean, when the enemies are in there, then it is pretty much so real time. When the enemies are not on the screen or anywhere in the disguise dungeon, it is kind of it is kind of turn based. I mean, I can move my heroes like so, but let's all be honest, nothing happens because it is turn based. Uh, I mean, I can end this or recap, but this doesn't matter. It just doesn't influence my. In, uh, you know, industry of food gain. You only gain food or industry once you open a door. Opening the doors is key to progress through this game. Now, let us open a new door and perhaps discover some bodies. I'm not going to install any turrets in this right now because there's really no need to install turrets in the very first few rooms on level one. No matter what your heroes will be perfectly capable of destroying anything. Now, since I want this hero to give her wits to the structure so that I gain more. Industry as I open this door, I'm going to use the slow brood to open this door and see what is inside As you can see I just gained food and industry, so let's see what is in there And also hostile creatures including a very tough one But that's not a problem, there's only a few of those guys I should be able to kill them quite easily Now I'm going to use an active pause, but I don't explain what is happening Yes, there is a fight and yes, there is an active pause in this game, which is very nice So first of all, as you can see my heroes are taking damage Sometimes you need to heal them up, because if they die, they die and this game does not have uh, any save options. I mean, you can save and quit the game, which is very nice. I have no idea why so many roguelikes hate allowing you to save the game and quit it so that you can come back to it later. Many roguelikes forget that this is an important thing, that maybe you don't have time to play all day through the game. This game does allow you to save and quit and... Oh no, game paused. There we go. Which is very nice indeed. So, you can heal your heroes up. It does cost uh, food, but sometimes you need to because otherwise they die. Obviously, you don't really want to do this as well. Because instead of killing a hero, it is much better to actually just level them up so that you don't have to worry about healing them. Because after you kill all the enemies in the discarded dungeon, your heroes automatic are automatically healed to full health, which is very important. And as you're going to see right now, enemy is dead and my heroes are getting healed to full health, which is very nice. Now, if I were to leave this room, okay, and open the new door, then there is a sudden chance that the bodies would spawn in this room. That's because the bodies always can spawn in a room that has no power and no hero in it. But I don't want this to happen because then the enemy would attack me from a side that is unsecured, so I'm going to power this room. But besides, it is one of the rooms that actually has the major... Uh, how, how do you call it? Let's call it a hub, where you can install a major structure, which is very important because I do need more industry. Basically, what I like to do in every game, on level 1, is to make two or maybe even three industry producing structures and only then start going for food. Maybe even uh, raise one of the industry structures and replace it with food. But you need to get as much industry in early game as possible because it might be very important for you later down the line. Now, I do not need to make any threats in this room whatsoever because, because since it is now powered, the enemies can spawn here and they cannot get over here either. The enemies always pr uh, try to get to your crystal and ignore other passageways, which is very important. Now, there are different types of enemies and they have, aside from different types of attacks and whatnot, they also have different priorities. Some of those enemies, one type of enemy in fact, is going to ignore everything and just make a beeline for crystals. This, those enemies are really tough and difficult and annoying to get rid of because sometimes they just slip past your defenses and heroes and they start eating your crystal, which is very annoying. Some enemies uh, trying to hunt down for your heroes and they always trying to uh, prioritize your heroes. Some enemies just attack turrets, some enemies just prioritize uh, the central structures. All enemies are different and they have different AI behaviors and it is very nice indeed. Anyway, as I said before, I'm going to open the door with my brute guys. I want the scale to contribute her wit to this machine so that I get more stuff and in this room oh, there's the enemy that actually always makes a beeline for the crystal and one and normal enemy. This room actually had some dust in it, which is very important because you need dust really badly, otherwise you are not going to be able to progress through the game all that well, which is sometimes kind of difficult because if you all oh, like this guy actually made it into the crystal room, so I can going to pause the game for most my heroes to get their ASAP. And he actually got a hit on my crystal, which cost me one dust, which is very annoying. Fortunately, so many enemies when they die, they also give you uh, they also give you dust, so this kind of makes up for it. But you need this dust really badly, because with dust you can power up new rooms, and in said rooms you can make various types of stuff. Now, this is actually a fairly good room to have, because as you can see, 
So far the only way to my crystal is over from here, because I'm going to keep this shrimp pad at all times pretty much. But what I can do is install a pair of turrets over here. By holding my shift button I can continuously make turrets and just not worry about anything. And that's that, and those turrets are not going to be able to shoot at enemies. Obviously, now that I have unpowered this room, those turrets cannot fire the enemies. But what I can do is use this hero, open this door, right? Now, the door has opened, and as you can see, I gained my amount of uh, food in the industry. And now, this is the moment when, uh, as you can see, the enemies randomly spawn. And they spawn in this room, because it was unpowered and they were able to spawn. So what I can do is unpower this room, so that, since it is not doing anything for me at all. They all. It only produces industry for you once you open doors. And I can power this room that has threats in it, and la di da, I'm actually, you know, taking benefits from having those turrets, which is very, very nice. In fact, I'm going to move more from my heroes over here, so that uh, I have a little bit more of an easy fight when I try to kill those guys, which is very important. And there, all enemies are dealt with, fairly easy job. Now I can unpower this room pound, this one to gain more industry, and I can repeat this process as much as I want to, which is very important when you have low amounts of dust, which is usually at the beginning of every level. Now, something that is very nice in this game, Yes, you can transition between levels, uh, this is basically the goal of the game to reach the lowest level. But as you progress through the game, what is also very important is that... Oh, we'll get spawned all over here, alright, let's move everybody over there. But what is very important, in fact, is the fact that... No, hold on a second, my hero is about to die, so I think I'm just going to re retreat this gal. I mean, I could heal her up, but I want to save my food as much as possible. And this guy is quite beefy, so I shouldn't worry, in fact. Oh, this guy actually follows me. This is quite bad. But okay, right now he is focusing on destroying this thingy, and uh, my big guy is actually quite uh, kind of low on health as well. And this guy is the hero hunter, he really likes killing heroes. So, maybe if I double team on him, I'll be able to do this. No, I need to heal now, or else I'll lose my hero. But this is okay, now this guy died. Now, some heroes can also repair modules, not all of them. This is the only skill that is currently added in-game. But it's also a very important one, because when you repair stuff, you don't need to waste your industry on something. Which is nice. I'm actually considering making a turret in this room as well, just in case the enemy actually slips by me. And it only costs me free industry to do so, so I might as well do that. In fact, I'll make plenty of defenses over here. I could also make this healing thingy, but I don't think it is necessary. I mean, I could, but it costs a lot of industry that I do not have right now. I, don't, I need more industry to be able to just freely use the excess of it. And actually, I have enough dust uh, to create a new food slash industry production uh, facility, which I'll gladly do right over here. Now, I could make more food, but right now I need more industry, so I'm just going to make another industry plan. Besides, now my girl can stay in this room and happily operate it and make it produce more industry for me. But what I can do as well is unpower this room, power this room for a second and create some turrets over here, since this will be the place where I want to have my turrets, because this is a very nice hub, where I want to fork, uh, you know, a choke point where I can fight the enemies. And this proves that something you should never do in Dungeon of the Endless is make turrets before you really, really need them. There was no need for me to create those turrets, I made them because I wasn't thinking straight for a second, and this costed me a bit of industry, yes, but this industry could have been used for something else. And right now, the probability of the enemy getting to this room is basically zero, so there was no need for me to do that at all. But mistakes can happen sometimes. This, right now it doesn't really matter, because I'm not, not sure if I mentioned this already or not, but this game is really quite easy. I assume it is going to get a lot harder once uh, there's more content added. Maybe there will be difficulty options, I hope. But right now this game is... Uh, is really, really kind of easy to beat. As I said, mentioned, I only died once in my second time, which, you know... I'm not the worst player in the games, and apparently in this game as well, and actually, hold on a second. Uh, I think my heroes are okay. I might retreat the fast girl to the other room, but I think that Schwarzenegger is really not in a big trouble. Nope, everything's fine, I didn't have to spend any food whatsoever, and I actually have a lot of uh, energy right now. I don't really need it, uh, however. So, what I can do... Is, first of all, this uh, room is just a dead end. So, it doesn't really matter where I go from here, because this room is going to be a very nice drop point and I think I'm just going to fill it up with base defenses and there isn't much else I need to do other than that. So, let's create one healing apparatus 
and uh, additional two turrets and right now this room is very nice and basically nobody can come through here. I could use the unpower power tactic to create some turrets over here or here. I don't need to do so however. I really do not. So let's open this door and see what is behind there. And this is basically what this game is all about. Obviously right now this is the first level. Oh. Hi, that's a new hero. Which hero is that? I'm not sure if I... Oh, I think I recognize this girl. She's quite good. I like her. But I don't have enough food to hire her. This is why I was not leveling my heroes up. As you can see, I have more than enough uh, food to actually level those guys up, which I should do at some point. But right now, I don't need to do that. I want to stockpile on food so that I can hire this gal. Now, the problem is I'm only gaining two food per ten, which is the base amount of food that you always have to gain at the very least. But I need to protect her because she can be killed by monsters. She is going to defend herself, but she's only level one. She can be overwhelmed quite easy. So what I'm going to do is open the doors on the opposite side of this room to lower the probability of the body spawning in there. Usually no more than three waves uh, spawn at the same time and on the very first level usually only one or two waves of body spawn in the unpowered rooms. In fact what I can do for now is just open this door, wait until I gain my food and industry, unpower this room, oh wait no I have to keep it powered because if the body spawn in there then I caught with my pants down, never mind. So there we go, and oh, that's pretty nice, a merchant. Now those merchants, the f there's a certain trick to them, right? Because when you need to talk to and trade with them, you can buy stuff for dust. You can also sell stuff, but my advice, never ever sell anything. You might always need it, unless you have a team of four people, all of them with weapons that you want them to have, then you never want to sell because you might need the things that you are about to sell. Don't sell anything, really, don't. But buying stuff, it's very nice that you are able to do this, but as you can see, this would cost me dust. And as I explained, this basically costs me hit points of this crystal, and at the same time, it this allows me to power some of my rooms. If I were to spend, for example, 20 dust, I would be only able to power up two rooms at any given time, which would be kind of bad for me. So, I'm not going to buy anything. However, there is a very important feature in this game. It is that every time you complete a level, you keep the amount of industry and food that you have on you. You get it on the next level unchanged, which is why you want to stockpile on as much of it as you can. However, thus it's always reset to 20. So when you're about to proceed to the next level, what I do is uh, I don't care about unpowering my rooms, so I'm going to leave the area. I just spend all my dust on the things I can buy from Merchant and I get some really good equipment this way. Since equipment is persistent, dust is not. Anyway, right now I'm going to just put the progress through this door. Now, thing is, uh, who do I want more? A hero or a mansion? I think a hero is more important, but right now I have a decent amount of uh, production. Not so good on the food front, so what I'm going to do is dismantle this production facility. Instead, generate some more food. Now this guy is going to be giving me more food and I'm going to gain a decent amount of it as well. And I still have sent in the industry stockpile, I didn't need to make anything more, probably in this entire level, since level 1 is kinda easy. And I'm still getting 10 industry per 10, which is very nice, alright. Is there going to be the exit? Yes, this is the exit. So once you discover the exit, what you want to do is grab your crystal and then walk your way back here. Then the game uh, does not allow you... Is persistently eat the real time option. You cannot do this 10 by 10. The enemies just keep spawning until you get to the exit, which can be quite hectic and interesting. Interesting if the path pathway to the crystal is long, but more often than not, you usually have no problems getting there if you play the game right. At least I don't think I ever got my crystal carrier intercepted or killed at all. But anyway. <laughs> What I'm going to do right now is retreat. Now, what you usually want to do is actually not progress to the next floor after you discover that you want to open all the doors on the level so that you can stock out on food and industry as much as you possibly can. This is usually pretty important. Now, unfortunately, it looks like this guy is actually going to focus fire on my merchant, so I need to keep my heavy in here to protect my merchant and hope that my girl, the, the girl of. Uh, the sword doesn't die. I did have to spend some food on her, unfortunately, which is very annoying. But she was almost about to die, so I had to spend it, unfortunately. Anyway, the bodies are mostly dead. The but for some reason, this guy isn't firing. <laughs> it is possible that after I talked about this game having no bugs, I just got the very first one. Yeah, when things are in the doorway, they are invulnerable, but they also cannot attack. So sometimes this happens to your heroes as well. Very rarely, though. But since this is the first time, I mean, 
this is the first time I was ever unable to actually fire the enemy because my hero is stuck in a doorway. So yeah, I've got more dust now that I can power things with. So let's protect this room. Actually, let's not. Let's just... It doesn't ma really matter which room I power up, honestly. It really, really doesn't at this point in time. So I'm just going to continue discovering the new floors. And uh, in this tent, I should have enough dust to actually buy out this here. So what I'm going to do is... Okay, that's nice. I have enough food to actually hire this hero. Let's see the creatures. Oh, those are kind of nasty. But what I can do is... <laughs> yeah, is hire this girl. And there we go. I've got another hero, which is very nice. I'm going to go over there. And just because I want to see what is happening in the room nearby, when you power a room, you basically see the room as well. So I'm going to power this room, let's say. Let's see what is coming. Oh, that's just a very nasty bit of enemies coming my way. I may have to retreat from this room very quickly, but I do have the healing apparatus in this room, which does help me considerably. It, once you hear all heroes reach later levels of experience it's not as important because they have so much health that this thing basically doesn't heal them at all fortunately looks like nobody was trying to kill my match so this is good and this is the guy that ignores everything it just, just makes a beeline for crystal which sometimes gets very annoying but this time he spot so far away that it's good okay imagine it is still alive do I have any more doors to open yes i do so what i want to do is this guy is slower so she's going to be up front this guy is faster so she's going to be in the back and this guy has no wood, so he's not going to be operating anything, he's just going to open doors. Usually I use this girl to roam around open doors when one not because of her speed, but since this guy has so little wit, there is I really shouldn't make him generate more industry of food for me, so I just do not I suppose that. I do hope I do not discover more bodies, however, because I want to wrap this video up, but I don't want to do so until I progress to a new level. Alright, I got the Tesla module, which is a new type of turret. Which is very nice, I usually install like one of them in a choke point area, like this room for example. I could, I would normally install, but it's level 1, so I don't really need Teslas. And honestly, I really like the cheapest uh, defense. If they have a decent APM, they're good at finishing of heavy damage uh, bodies, which sometimes are otherwise able to slip past your defenses. And big uh, weapons, uh, big uh, turrets, like the biggest one, uh, Crymore, I think it's called, <laughs> instead of Claymore. And they're very nice, they have nice amount of damage, but they often let your enemies slip past them with almost no health, but still with enough health to cause you some damage. So I really like those guys as finishers, per se. Anyway, no bodies is called over here. This is probably going to be the last door because the first uh, level only has. Um, I'm sorry for this boss. A certain amount of flaws and the hostile creatures, but those guys shouldn't be a problem. I should be. Oh wow, never mind. A lot of enemies came through. And I should retreat my hero right now to make sure that everybody is safe and defend this room because I really, really need to do so. Since the enemies are going to pour in, and in fact, I might have to kill my Schwarzenegger guy because he's just so slow. This is why I don't like exploring with him, but then again, he's got so little wit that you kind of have to explore with him because he's uses at operating anything. This is why he's also not my favorite. No! I thought they are not going to fire at him. Well, he died. F him, he was not that bad. <laughs> yeah, it happened. What? I wasn't looking, no! I lost the best hero. Yeah, this is usually when he things go really poorly. Oh, wow. I didn't look at all the HP, I just wasn't looking there. Yeah, so this, this is uh, the one thing that this game needs. It needs the OMG, you're about to lose your hero warning thingy because yeah more often than not i just do not notice that my heroes are about to die now losing your heroes even when you have only one hero left it usually doesn't mean that you're going to lose the game the most important thing is uh, dust food and industry as long as you have at least one hero left alive it's still all good so i don't have to worry too much and hey i can spend my dust on healing this guy right now instead of doing anything else but this is obviously not good having only one hero is usually bad and i cannot even level her up so yeah it is went quite poorly because I wasn't watching, but that's fine! It is going to make this video a little bit more spicy. So, let's open this door. Hope that it is the last one is in the end. So, what is behind it? Uh, hostile creatures, nothing else. Alright, let's retreat over here. Uh, hopefully no other waves are going to spawn. No, they didn't. That's good because otherwise this could be quite nasty. So now what I'm going to do is probably power up rooms that are leading to the exit and I'm probably also going to leave some defenses on the way to the exit not a lot of them 
only two of them in this passive way they will do me good as you can see turrets are pro being produced very slowly when there are still bodies on the level this will end that just makes sense you're supposed to be persistent in one in, in what you do and plan ahead you definitely need to plan ahead in this uh, game so okay you can stop firing you now thank you okay so what i'm going to do now is go over here take the crystal and be on my merry way now the thing is that once you take a uh, grab a crystal you your runes are going to gradually be unpaired i mean not like usual. For example, if I've unpowered this room, then I cut the connection with my other rooms and they all get unpowered as well. But when you grab a crystal, then your rooms get unpowered one by one uh, whenever you pass through them. So, as you can see right now, I'm going to grab my crystal, walk over here, and then gradually one by one my rooms are going to get unpowered, but those later rooms are still going to have power, which is very important, otherwise you would be in a lot of trouble. So, let's see if my hero can actually do this. With the amount of food I have, so oh, I forgot to visit the merchant. I can still buy from him, though. Don't worry, I can still purchase goods from him. Even now, when my when I'm carrying the, uh, the crystal, obviously it is not the optimal thing to do, but I can do this. So right now, as you can see, uh, my rooms are getting unpowered, but they also did uh, their job at securing me from the enemies. And what I'm going to do now is, uh, hey, okay, never mind. Maybe I cannot. I swear that I did buy from the merchant previously when I was uh, already trying to arrive, but I didn't do so with a uh, diamond carrier, crystal carrier, but whatever, it happens. Now you can see the stage time, total time, mob skill doors open, and the resources are certainly going to progress with to the next level. And that's that, that's the game. Right now it only has like three, maybe it was four, I don't remember levels and whatnot. It's really kind of easy to progress to the next one. Because, as I said, having one hero is kind of bad, but I will find more heroes and I will be able to recover most likely. Besides now, it's a cool challenge, but since I do have a lot of industry and food stock part from the previous level, I don't have to worry as much uh, about making uh, those industry generators, I can just focus on food generators. Instead, it's generally pretty nice. So, that's about it. Now, that's that. <laughs> that's this game. It's really nice. It, Basically, obviously, right now doesn't have really a lot of features in it. It's in very early alpha, but it is already is it's already very how do you call it? I keep wanting to play it. How do you call it? It is I just forgot the word. I'm sorry. It my mind just refuses to cooperate. But I keep wanting to replay this game. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Even though it does have a lot of features in it, it's a very nicely done. A very polished creature, especially considering that it is in alpha, and it has a surprising amount of depth and surgery to it. Especially later in the game when there are more hub connections between floors, there's a certain way that you want to discover your rooms with. For example, when you see expand from a crystal, you basically want to leave like one room or maybe two rooms with just those hub areas in there that you have no defenses in and just have production facilities. And then you want to have a long corridor with best uh, defenses that you use to open doors and whatnot. I'll probably talk about a bit more about this because I am planning to make a video series of this game because it is a very nice game. It is not. I'm not going to make a long video series right now because obviously it's in early alpha and there's much to show. But still, this game is really interesting and really cool. So I encourage you to check it out. Not necessarily to buy it if you don't trust Amplitude because it is in a very early development. But if you trust Amplitude as much as I do and I trust them wholeheartedly that they are going to do their very best they can because they are very passionate, intelligent and skilled people that are awesome at their jobs, then just buy this early access. Those guys can always, you know, make do with a little bit of extra money and so far from what I've seen this game is quite amazing. So yeah, I encourage you to check this out, think about buying it, not necessarily buy it because it is early alpha, but you know what? Actually. You could just buy it. It is really nice. Very short, don't be mistaken, right now. But in the future, it will probably be much longer. So there we go. That's Dungeon of the Endless for you. Very nice game. Really very nice game. I am enjoying my time with it immensely. I really am. I cannot recommend it enough. So, there we go, it was Panchos the Mighty Mixpar. If you somehow managed to enjoy my video, guys, consider subscribing to my channel. And also considering leaving a like on this video cast, or most importantly, leaving a comment. I love the comments most of all. I love reading them, replying to them, and whatnot. This does this is the best thing about my job as a video caster, honestly. So yeah, if you could call it a job, I'm hobby. Let's leave it in life, so. And yeah, also follow my Twitter so that we can chat. I mean, really, Twitters—they're awesome. <laughs> 
and check this game out. As I mentioned already, link to this game's website is in the description. And I don't think there is anything else that I need to talk about aside from the general partings. Thank you very much for watching again, and I'll see you online.